How's it going everybody? Doug Lane, Fast Lane Car Care. Hey, today we've got this 2015 Honda Fit. I'm gonna show you how to do the front brakes on these. These have disc brakes. It's pretty simple, really easy process. You got a few simple tools, you can do it yourself, no problem. Some of the tools you're gonna need, a light is helpful. Uh, an impact gun is helpful. If not, you are going to need a 19 millimeter socket of some sort. Uh, this is a 3 8 El Cheapo Craftsman. Uh, and then you are going to need a 12 millimeter socket, okay? Um, another tool you will need is a pair of channel locks or a uh, brake piston uh, depressing tool. This works just fine for me. And you will, might also want a pry bar. Also, you are going to definitely need a new set of brake pads and I use high temperature axle grease or chassis grease, whichever you want to call it, whatever. Uh, that doesn't necessarily matter, but let's get started. First, we're gonna to to take off the tire. Also, you're gonna want a jack. I, I feel like that should be pretty obvious. You're gonna need a jack. I should be using jack stands. I don't have any jack stands here at this new shop because I'm not a mechanic. I just do this stuff for friends and family and stuff like that. So I got my, like I said, I should have a jack stand, but I don't, I really am not too uh, worried about it because I'm not gonna be working under the car at all. So if it does fall, it's not a huge deal. So we used our 19 millimeter socket, took off our lug nuts. Now we're gonna switch over to our 12. And we've got two bolts right here for the, the caliper. One here, one down here on the bottom. And we're gonna remove those. Set these somewhere safe. All right now, I'm gonna take our caliper and I'm gonna flip it up here like this. Uh, careful not to kink your brake hose. And then I need, this is where your channel locks come in. They do make a special tool to do this. However, uh, these are really simple. I mean, they're, they're, there's not a whole lot of pressure on them. This is a great time to check your boot. Make sure there's no tears, no leaks or anything like that. And then we're just gonna slowly depress this piston back in. Uh, otherwise, our new brake pads won't fit. So we need to slowly push this back in until it's basically flush to accommodate for the thickness of our new pads. I'm going slow just so it doesn't bust any of the seals or anything like that from the pressure. Now this is where we're gonna use some of our grease. What I like to do is take a little bit of grease. It really doesn't have to be anything too fancy. We're just gonna kinda put a coating here and that's gonna keep this from rusting up. It's gonna keep the, the piston from rusting to the pad. Up here in Ohio, we get a lot of salt water. This one isn't too bad, honestly. I figured it'd be worse, but it's not. Surprisingly, but sometimes these cars, especially if you don't maintain them very well, they'll, they'll, it'll try to rust the pads and yeah, it's not a good deal. So a little bit of grease, it's gonna save you the next time you go to do this job. Here's another reason I use my pry bar. I'm just gently, I'm just gently prying these pads out. You just make a little bit of space 
right there. Get your pry bar in there. You're not really putting much pressure on them, or at least you shouldn't be, because you can damage your rotor. You could use a flathead screwdriver if you wanted to, but there's our pads. You could tell they got a little bit of life left on them, but they were going to start squealing here soon. <clears throat> now, you want to make sure that your new brakes come with new hardware. These ones did, and they're the correct hardware, so we're going to get rid of our old hardware by just simply kind of using our pry bar and just lifting it up out of there. So now we're gonna use some of our grease. This isn't 100% necessary, but like I said, it just makes it easier the next time. And we're just gonna put a little bit right here where the hardware is going to contact the caliper bracket including the back now we're ready for our new hardware now you need to pay attention because sometimes your hardware kit you'll have a different set you know a different set of hardware for the top or bottom these ones are all identical and they're a little bit different than the factory hardware thank you camera lady um, but they it works it, it's it's fine um, Sometimes you will run into a situation where like your your brake pads may be uh, Universal there, you know, it may fit different applications and so sometimes your hardware won't match uh, and that's kind of a pain but you See what we're doing here There you go, and now I'm gonna take a little bit of the grease and I'm just gonna slap it on the hardware. A little thin coating, you don't need a whole lot. <clears throat> now on this particular application, in most applications, you're gonna have two different sets of pads. One's gonna have this wear indicator. Uh, some people call them squealers, whatever. Basically, once your pad gets down so far, this metal is gonna start contacting your rotor and it's gonna make a grinding sound, and that's gonna be a great indication uh, that your pads need changed. Usually this one will go on the inside, and that is the case for this application as well. So, all you do is basically start one side, and then the other, here I'll show you right here. This one's a little bit trickier, but we just stuck it down here in this bottom part. There you go. Now your pads should basically, uh, they should fit loosely. You shouldn't have to tap them or hammer them or anything like that. <clears throat> and now that we've already greased our caliper bracket or our, our caliper itself, get my glove back. Now we can go ahead, actually, let's uh, take a pause here. Here's our sliders, our, our pins. We need to, uh, take these out and check them. We want to make sure that they move freely. These ones are a little bit, I don't know, they're kind of sticky. So let's check these. They do have grease on them. Um, while we're here, we're going to go ahead and put some more grease on them. So what I'm going to do, take my shop towel, wipe this old stuff off. One way you can get in trouble is if you over, over lubricate these. Uh, if you get too much grease on there, it can kind of create a vacuum and it'll keep your pin from being able to slide. So you really just want a thin coat, something like that. And go ahead and slide it on. And then another important part is to make sure your rubber boot actually goes over that lip until that, that that goes much more freely. Same way with the bottom. This is something that literally so many people don't do. They'll they'll just you know they just don't even think about it or whatever. And it's it's a minute and a half of work that can uh, save your brakes because a lot of times these pins will get seized up. And then it'll make your brake pads wear out unevenly or uh, sometimes, you know, you won't even get the same, like your brakes just won't work as well. 
and yeah, it's not good. You, you know, you, you're chewing up your new pads and you know, not good. A minute and a half, it's done. It was that simple. Let's go ahead and get our caliber back on here. Get our, our pin slid in. All right, now we're ready to start putting this back together. So go ahead and line that up. I like to just put it in a couple threads and get my bottom lined up. All right, back to the impact. You could torque these to spec, or you could give it a couple ugga duggas. Ah! Better want our light. All right. All right, so now let's look at the wheel face. What I should do is take a like a roll lock pad and get this nasty cruddy crust off of it. <clears throat> but uh, I don't have one of those, but what we are gonna do is take a thin layer of grease and you could take fluid film, you could use spray grease, you could use WD-40 if you really wanted to. I prefer actual grease, it just seems to block out moisture better but all we're really doing is putting a thin coat right here you can tell this is where the wheel where the back of the wheel is going to meet uh this rotor face and so we don't want this to rust and seize up on there so um pretty much just paint it on there if you do get just a little bit on your caliper or on your rotor or whatever your or your wheel studs don't worry about it, it's not the end of the world. As long as you're not caking it on there. If it does make you nervous, go ahead, wipe it off, hit it with a little brake cleaner, and you'll be good as new. So now we're done with our brakes. Start cleaning up our mess a little bit. This little trick with the grease, that's gonna save you in the, in the case of an emergency situation. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people uh, have a car that the wheel is just rusted onto the rotor or the hub face, whichever it's contacting, and you go to change the tire or rotate them or whatever, and you just have to beat the snot out of them. Ugh, there we go. Looking like it's my first day on the job. But that right there will save your bacon because your wheel is not going to rust on there. So when you go to take your lug nuts off, uh, your wheel, you know, you just give it a tap, and it'll come right off. It's much safer if you're using a, uh, like a scissor jack, like I said, in a, in an emergency situation. It makes life much easier for you or whoever has to change the tire. Switch out our 12 for our 19. At this point, you're technically going to want to torque these factory specs. I know this impact's only going to fasten to about 110, 120 foot-pounds, which is a little bit more than this actually calls for, but it's, it's not going to be a big deal. There you have it. It's all done. Lower your vehicle, get all your stuff out of the way, uh, and uh, you're ready to get on down the road. Thanks, guys, for watching.